Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and give you guys an update for my 3.1 Righteous Fire build guide. Now before I actually go on into this, I want to update you guys a little bit with a couple information. Um, so step one or number one is basically this build guide uh, located right here for my 3.0 starter build is going to be 100% valid for this current league along with the Righteous Fire equipment progression guide. So if you guys need a Righteous Fire guide to follow, I'm going to go ahead and link these in the description below. There's also a playlist here that organizes everything that you need to know about Righteous Fire. What we're going to go ahead and talk about in this video is all of the changes for 3.1 that you guys need to know for Righteous Fire so you can modify your characters to pretty much the best that they can be. Now, of course, there are new uniques that I don't know of that I can create more content on later as we explore through the league, but this is kind of with the information that I have. Before I actually start this, though, I want to go ahead and show you guys some other videos I'm going to produce or release before the league goes live. So I have a 3.1 crit detonate dead slash volatile dead because they're scaled very similarly uh, along with cremation. So this outline should work for all three of those. Uh, and again, just to confirm, it is going to be a crit detonate dead slash volatile dead slash cremation inquisitor to bypass the elemental uh, elemental resistance. Uh, remember that you don't necessarily need Volpact anymore to survive Reflect because Reflect has been changed to like Mortar. So that's awesome. We've got the 3.1 Righteous Fire Berserker, which I will also link down below. The tree has not changed whatsoever. Um, of course, you can modify it a little bit, and I'll explain that a little bit later when we go over the gear. Uh, and then the last two is going to be the 3.1 Freeze Pulse Inquisitor, which I played in Mayhem League, had a lot of fun with, and got to change up the tree because of the Volpack changes. And then the Blight Occultist, which I don't know if I'm going to make a video guide for right now, just because it's not very beginner friendly because you go CI. And it's not that bad to get started, but CI can be a little bit confusing for new players. But anyway, that's for another time. Let's go ahead and get into some of the changes. So the number one most notable change about Righteous Fire, I'm going to go ahead and go into right now which is right here. So just to go over everything with you guys, this is going to talk about the Belt of Deceiver change, Rise of the Phoenix change, the new belt we're going to use, the Witchfire Brew change, the Essence of Insanity change, Despair, which is the new curse we're going to be using, and the new Abyss stats. I actually don't even know what this is. Oh, I do remember. Okay, cool. So Rise of the Phoenix has been changed. Rise of the Phoenix maximum fire resistance granted has been reduced to 5% from 8%. The life regeneration has been increased from 6, um, and it also grants 40 to 60 life. So, in the current state, this is how my Righteous Fire character would look after the patch. I know, it's completely un unplayable. I'm degening, right? So, I switched my purity from a level 21 to a level 11. So, just so you guys can see, I'm 86 fire res, and now I'm 89. So, this right now is basically what you would see with the nerf. This character has not helped Oak for Bandits. If you are new, I would 100% recommend helping Oak. I will be helping Oak as well. Uh, and then just to confirm, you know, when I get higher level, I may respec. So some quick regeneration notes you can spec if you would like to get a bit more regen. You can help Oak. That's 1% regen. You've got three 0.4% regen nodes here in Templar. You also have a 0.3% life regen in Scion. And lastly... You have the three point over here, life regeneration per endurance charge. So you're more than fine to play Righteous Fire in the new league. So let's go ahead and jump on into some of the other changes. So Intimidate. Intimidate causes enemies to take 10% increased attack damage rather than 10% increased damage. What this means is that this belt that we used to use called Belt of Deceiver, you will no longer use. I don't really know if there's a specific leveling belt. You can pretty much use whatever you want. You'll just get a life and res belt. However, you will use the new belt. I don't know the exact level of it called the Stygian belt. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it has an abyssal socket. Abyssal sockets are basically have place for abyssal gems, which are the, well, I actually don't even know what they're called. It's the new gems coming out in the Abyss League. So I guess they'll be called abyssal gems or, uh, or jewels. Now, where was it that I was going to show in this? Oh, yeah. End game crafting, I'm pretty sure you're going to use an Essence of Insanity on your belt. Essence of Insanity now grants 10% increased movement instead of 5 on your belt. 
So you can ideally have an Abyssal Belt rolled with an Essence of Insanity with like 99 life, 50 strength, and then have an Abyssal Jewel that you put in with additional stats. So our character is going to hit over 12k HP. If I had a life roll on Rise of the Phoenix right now, I'd be like 11.5, 11.6, and swapping out my belt will put us to like 12.2, 12.3, and I could actually get 13k with a different shield. Actually, no, maybe like, I I could probably push 13k, but let's, let's round out 12k. So, um, after that, we also have the new change to Witchfire Brew. Witchfire Brew is currently over here. So they say now, Witchfire Brew now creates a Despair Curse Aura on use. This affects all versions of the item. So instead of it being Vulnerability, we now have Despair. Despair is the new curse located right here. So previously, I believe Vulnerability was Cursed Enemies Take 33% Increased Damage from Overtime Effects. With the new the new uh, Curse Despair, I believe we get 2% Increased Damage... Um, which I think is a multiplier, so that's pretty good. That's pretty solid. No complaints there. Um, one of the last things to really bring up is some of the new mods that you can roll. So in the Abyss League, you get access to different types of rolls now because of the Shaper and the Elder items. So here's a shield with an example that has plus one maximum all resistance, and it has 0.67% of life regeneration per second. That is percentage regeneration. I don't know where these mods can roll specifically, so that's something really cool to, to think of. You know, if you could get max all res and percent regen on like a pair of gloves or a helmet, that's ridiculous. So we really do have to look into this to see specifically where it leads us. Now, there is one more thing to show you guys. Um, I don't remember if I brought this up or not. I forgot at the beginning of the video. My bad if I repeat this, but if you guys need the actual build guides for my Righteous Fire character, I have them posted here on my YouTube. Um, the current builds for 3.0 work 100% just fine for 3.1, so you can follow the equipment progression guide and the actual build guide that I have posted right here. The last two things to really bring up is if you do not want to use a Rise of the Phoenix, you do have access to other unique shields. The following would be Saffle's Frame. So Saffle's Frame gives you 4 to max res, but you have to be careful because you cannot block attacks, but you do get a ton of spell block. So that's something to really think of. I wouldn't recommend it, but I know a lot of people like to do different things, and this is totally an option. And then you have the Oak Shield, which is a very strong shield. Rolls up to 150 life, also gives you 3% life regen per second. So it still doesn't mitigate as much as Rise of the Phoenix, but it is still an also a very nice shield to use. So you're totally welcome to try this out as well. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I'm sorry if it was a short video. I didn't want to do another build guide because it's literally the exact same thing. So I do apologize if you guys get a little upset. But this current video should cover everything for you guys. And like I said, there is, well, this one here. There is also a playlist located right here that you guys can check everything out on. Anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Remember, if you did, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I'll probably be doing a pretty extent or pretty long stream for the actual Abyss release, which is in like 24 hours. So anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.